Hey everyone, my name is Shashan Kalanathi, and on this channel, I help you learn the skills you need to become a data analyst. Today, we're going to be going over what a data analyst is, and what are some of the skills that are commonly asked of data analysts in corporate America. Speaking of which, to be clear, this video is going to talk about data analysts as their jobs are in many corporate settings. So for example, you'll also have data analysts working in research, and some data analysts working in government sectors, where the skills asked of the analysts might be completely different. Uh, but because my experience is very much in corporate America, that's what we're going to be sticking to. Before we get started, if you're at all interested in supporting this channel, feel free to support my Patreon link down below, where you'll be able to also get access to some exclusive notes I have on machine learning and statistics, and also it's a great way of helping ensure that this channel stays clickbait free and content full. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You'll see that the uh, notes that you're seeing on screen right now, they will be available on uh, in the description for free. So. Let's first go over uh, what is a data analyst. We're going to be going over what is a data analyst, what does a day in the life of a data analyst look like, and what are the skills that are normally expected of data analysts in corporate America. So first starting off with what a data analyst actually is. So my definition uh, that I came up with is a data analyst is someone who recognizes what phenomenon a stakeholder wants to understand, gathers, analyzes, and organizes the data necessary to understand the phenomenon, and presents their findings to a non-expert audience. So there are two terms over here that I'd like to define. First, stakeholder, and second, non-expert audience. So as I show over here, a stakeholder can be anyone from someone in marketing to sales to um, someone in IT or another analyst. Basically, it's someone who is not an expert in either the data or the analysis that you're doing. So oftentimes in my job, I will have people from other departments coming and asking me to do their analyses for them. Usually people who are not expert analysts, uh, analysts themselves, but do know their domain quite well. A domain being something like sales or marketing or supply chain. And the next topic would be a non-expert audience. And this can be either non-experts in the field um, that they're interested in, like marketing or sales, or they can be non-experts in analytics. So a non-expert in the field would be, for example, a director of analytics who's not an expert in marketing, but wants you to do a little bit of research into some marketing metrics that we might be interested in. And another type of non-expert can be a technical non-expert, which is someone who is an expert in the field, so like you know a director of marketing, but someone who doesn't necessarily know how to conduct the analysts, uh, the analytics themselves. So what does a day in the life of a data analyst actually look like? Um, the way I want to break down this topic is by first talking about what are the goals of a data analyst? What is a data analyst trying to accomplish on a daily basis? So data analysts usually work with some non-analyst to better help understand how to drive value for the business. Remember, we're focusing on corporate America over here. In my case, that's been either through finding inefficiencies in supply chains or trying to help better understand our customers. So the companies I've worked at, I've either worked in a supply chain function or I've worked in a um, strategic function at a major retailer. And because of that, usually we're trying to, in the supply chain companies, better under understand what inefficiencies might exist in our supply chain. And a lot of times that usually just comes down to surfacing up data that exists to the director level, that way people can actually see what's going on in the supply chain. Or in the case of the retail company I'm working at right now, it is um, actually trying to use the data we have to better understand our customers, their buying patterns, what they're interested in, and what how we may better serve them as a company. So given that workflow, I actually like to use the crisp DM methodology for breaking down the actual task of a data analyst. And so CRISPM stands for Cross Industry Standard Process for Data Mining, and it was something created by IBM in 1999, I believe. And it basically is a process that they created that more or less talks about the generalized process that the data, the data scientists and anyone working in the data sciences goes through. So analysts are very much a part of the data science profession, um, although they themselves are not data scientists. So there are uh, five different steps. First, starting off with business understanding and then data understanding, data preparation, evaluation, and deployment. And I highly recommend checking out the link I've linked in these notes over here to see how the cycle actually works. I'll see if I can put a picture of it up here as well. And what you'll see is that you first start off with business understanding and data understanding. And you'll see that you have the two arrows going back and forth between the two. And that's because this is where we first get our um, problem from the business. What are we actually trying to figure out? So for example, an issue that I might be given is um, help us better understand customers that have signed up for our loyalty program. Usually it'll be a little bit more specific, but I want to be a little bit broad to make sure I'm not talking about anything too private. 
And given that I was given that task of understanding loyal uh, customers who have signed up for our loyalty program, I would then go and check and see, okay, what data do we have access to? That's data understanding. What data is even being collected? And you need to understand this because not only do you have to understand what data is being collected, you need to understand um, if the data is not being collected, what is the process for actually collecting that data, going back to the business and telling them, hey, this is the timeline I expect it to take to actually accomplish this entire task. We have to make sure we can do all of that. After we do that, we then go into data preparation. And before I move on, I should probably say that business understanding and data understanding are probably two of the most important steps in this entire process. Although it doesn't sound like it should be, it really is because this is where you understand what that whole task is, how it can be accomplished, and you do a lot of the planning to determine, okay, what is the actual timeline that's realistic? And this is oftentimes where projects will uh, either flourish or die on the vine. And we'll go into this uh, in a, a little bit further down in the notes. Next, you go to data preparation. Data preparation is basically the part where you extract all the data you need and get it ready in order to actually do some kind of logic to it. Whoops. Next, you do uh, modeling, actually. Sorry, so I forgot to put in modeling over here. You do modeling, and modeling is basically the process of performing some kind of analysis, or in the case of a data scientist, making some kind of a model for your data for your data problem. So this is like maybe you're actually building out a Tableau dashboard or maybe you're modeling out store traffic based on Wi-Fi data or maybe you're doing something like um, uh, performing exploratory data analysis on the data. All of this kind of goes into the modeling aspect of it. Next is evaluation. This is where you work with your stakeholders to determine whether the goal of the project has been met or not. And if the goals have not been met, you need to go back to business understanding because there, there's been some form of miscommunication that led to a failed execution. And then eventually you get to deployment, which is basically just productionalizing whatever solution you have. That means if you have a Tableau dashboard, putting it out on a Tableau server. If you have a, um, um, if you have a data science model, putting that on some kind of server, that way it's running and it can actually like give people live results and live information as they need it or if you have an exploratory data analysis, that's where you might feed this loop back in again and say, okay, we've explored the data, this is what we want to do, and here's how we do it. So here is how those tasks would actually, here's how that actual model would filter into what I call an unusually productive day in the life of a data analyst. So uh, this would be a unusually productive day. So what I might do is I usually wake up in the morning and immediately I'll go ahead and answer any emails or Slack messages from international teams or people working late at night. So at my current company, I don't work with international teams, but in my previous company I did. And uh, because the teams were based in India, we would always have calls in the morning, um, usually early in the morning for my time. Then I will go and outline what work I have to do for the day. I find that outlining the work I have to do for the day helps prevent me from just diving deep into my work and mindlessly um, just doing tasks without really thinking, okay, wait, is this the most effective use of my time? And is this what I should be doing right now? Next, I need to meet with stakeholders to determine what requirements um, for a project are. And these meetings may last an hour up to two hours, depending on how much information we need to get from the stakeholders. And we'll go into a little bit more detail so what this actually means a little bit later. Um, Assuming this is an unusually productive day, the next thing to do would be usually just take a lunch break, um, let my mind take a little bit of a break from there. Oh, sorry, before that, I would probably have a little bit of time to write some SQL queries to pull some necessary data for the subject. This might take like 30 minutes to an hour, and then by then I would go take a lunch break. And then after coming back from the lunch break, or lunch break, I might go evaluate the accuracy of SQL queries that I pulled earlier. And I personally like to take a break between pulling my queries and actually evaluating their accuracy. That way I can ensure that I am uh, coming to the evaluation with a clear head. Uh, and for anyone not aware, SQL is just a language we use to pull data out of databases. Next, I write down, or next, I might start some basic exploratory data analysis that needs to be done on the data. This could take um, uh, any amount of time. It usually takes longer than I would like it to. And then after that, I'll write down what needs to get done for the next day so I can get started more efficiently. That's kind of the sample day in the life of a data analyst. And like I said, that's an unusually productive day, honestly. So, what skills do you actually need to become a data analyst? Well. Uh, there are a couple of things I want to go over here. Uh, years of experience, data analysts can be anything from an entry-level data analyst all the way to uh, the senior's individual contributor level. Individual contributor is just corporate speak for someone who doesn't manage other people. Uh, the education you need, I personally don't believe you should need an education to be a data analyst, but I will be 100% honest with you guys. Uh, most applications or most job postings I see will require you to have some kind of a bachelor's degree in order to actually apply for the job. So uh, one thing I do want to mention is that Google has a data analyst certificate, which they claim to look on as the equivalent of doing a four-year bachelor's degree. 
Um, I can't comment on how well other companies will look at this, but the curriculum is quite good. And uh, the only thing is I would say top Python instead of R, but I've looked at the Google Data Analytics certificate and it's a solid certificate. Um, how useful the actual certificate is, I'm not too sure, but the skills you build up there are real skills that data analysts will need. Next, let's go over some technical skills. This is usually what my channel focuses on, and so this is probably one of the longer sections. Uh, these are, in, and one thing I will say is that technical skills, I truly believe that technical skills are initially more important than soft skills, but if you have any interest in moving up in your career and moving up the corporate ladder, they'll quickly become second nature um, as to be secondary to soft skills. Soft skills are really how you boost your career after you've gotten the basics down, but I'm not going to uh, go two ways about it, and I will definitely say I will, I would rather hire a junior analyst who knows some technical skills than someone who has the best soft skills ever. Um, other people might feel differently, that's just my opinion on that. So there are a couple of uh, technical skills that you'll need to have. Uh, data extraction, data cleaning and ma manipulation, data visualization, and basic statistics. So data extraction is usually uh, refers to the fact that data will almost always live in some external storage format, whether that be a SQL server, uh, which is just like you know some database or something, um, or Excel or a CSV. Either way, you'll be needing to extract all the necessary data and prepare it for cleaning. And to do this, oftentimes SQL is the language that we use to do that. If you're at all interested in learning SQL, I have a free SQL course linked in the notes and linked above that you can go check out if you're at all interested. Next is data cleaning and data manipulation. Data rarely comes in the format that you need it in in order for your modeling or analysis. And to solve this, you'll use some tool to clean up your data, whether that be uh, Python or R or Excel through Power Pivot um, or Power Query. Alteryx, Tableau Prep, or Nime. Um, so this is something I find really funny. People get very defensive about the tools they use. The way I see it, like, there are two things. There, there are two considerations to decide what tool you want to learn. One, what tools are your team using? And two, what works the best to get the job done? I only say what tools are your team using because even if a job can get done more quickly in Power Pivot, for example, if the rest of your team is using Python for their data pipeline, you might have to use Python even if it's less efficient to get the job done, just to make sure that everything stays uh, compatible with what your team is creating. And if you're at all interested in learning Python, I have a free Python course, again, linked over here. These courses are all free. Data visualization. You need to communicate your findings or make data more visible to non-experts, and you'll accomplish this through some data visualization tool, normally called a BI tool, BI standing for business intelligence. Oftentimes this is done through Tableau or Power BI. If you want a free Tableau course, my first video on my channel, free Tableau course, linked over here. And basic statistics, um, these can be very useful. Basic statistics can be very useful to help take your analyses to the next level, but aren't necessary for many analyst jobs. And I will, I can 100% say I could probably be in the same place I am today with zero statistics knowledge, although they have definitely helped me in my career. And oftentimes you'll be using the skills um, that you use in exploratory data analysis. If you want, um, not really a course in EDA, but like just a short video on exploratory data analysis, short meaning it's an hour and a half long, check out the video link over here. I have another video on that. As you can tell, I have a lot of content on my channel to really teach you guys. And I get a lot of questions about like, what is a data analyst and like some like basic questions about the job itself. And I'm making this video to, in order to answer those questions. Feel free to leave some comments below if you guys have any questions about it, by the way. And finally, I want to go, oh, well, I guess not finally. One more thing I want to go over is like, what are the tools of a data analyst? If you want to see how I personally set up my data analyst setup, check out this video up here where I have my data analyst setup for productivity. Um, you'll need a computer, Mac or PC, really doesn't matter. Um, I would say you might only want to pick a PC if you are using some software that only works on PCs, stuff like, um, such as Alteryx, for example. Uh, BI tools, Tableau or Power BI. Um, these are BI tools, uh, these are data visualization tools, basically. Uh, data cleaning tools. Uh, re uh, requirements gathering tool. So I like to use Notion personally. Confluence is another one. Let's go ahead and add that in there. Um, or a project management tool like Jira. Again, Notion could also be used for that. And then I already linked that. So whoops. Come on. Let's get rid of that. And then let's go over the soft skills. So there are, I would say there are three major soft skills that you need to have as a data analyst that are not things like, you know, just generally getting along with people, not being someone that people don't like getting along with, stuff like that, you know? And that those would be requirements gathering, project management, and stakeholder management. 
So uh, requirements gathering, I like to call this the beginning and the beginning of the end of all analyst tasks. It's the beginning because it's the first step we undergo in our analytical routine, understanding what our stakeholder is looking for and asking the right questions and offering the right suggestions to better understand what we need to do. I also call it the beginning of the end because shotting requirements gathering will doom your project before it's even begun. Next is project management. Unless you're a one-person show, or in my first company, it was uh, we had a very small team, so project management was less important. But unless you're a one-person show, you'll usually have to work with many different people in uh, all parts of the organization, from data engineers to data scientists to business people all over the organization, to get the data and information that you need. Managing these disparate parts is accomplished through your superior project management skills. I would say this is something that is more necessary for a senior data analyst. A junior will probably not, not need to be good at this. And then eventually, um, and then also stakeholder management, which I would say fits into requirements gathering. And this is managing expectations. And this is something I would say is true for almost any career. Managing expectations is one of the pillars to success um, in your career. It's if you're very clear about what you can and can't achieve and communicate this regularly and well to your stakeholders, you'll find people will be more cooperative and projects, projects will go along more smoothly. And then finally, I just want to go over a couple of expectations of the job. If you want to become a data analyst, right, uh, what, are you, what should you expect out of this job? You're going to spend lots of hours in front of the computer. This is not an active profession, and I will spend at least si uh, six hours a day in front of the computer. If, I, um, if we were in office, I might spend fewer hours in front of the computer because I'll be like in physical meetings with people. But because we have to actually um, do everything through the computer, uh, this is a very computer-intensive profession. And I would also say this is a profession where you need to be very detail-oriented, and problems with data are numerous and can be very difficult to spot. You need to be data-oriented, you need to be um, detail-oriented, and I would also argue you need to be process-oriented, although this is not something that's emphasized nearly as much as it should be in the data science world. So that's my quick overview of what is a data analyst, and I'll be making more of these videos in the future, kind of brief explainers where I uh, show people what is the world of data all about. I really want to make one comparing data scientists to data analysts and showing you what the difference are between the two professions, or the difference is between the two professions. If you really like what you saw over here, feel free to leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Those really help me with the YouTube algorithm and are tremendously useful and a great way to support my channel. If you want to support the channel further and help keep more non-clickbaity content like this on YouTube, feel free to support my Patreon, also linked in the description below. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love reading those comments. And if you have any improvements that I can make for this video, please let me know. This is, I think, the first time I've done a video not in front of my computer. So this will be, um, it'll be interesting to see how this performs. Thank you guys so much and I hope you have a great day.